Cats can be a little picky when it comes to accepting just about anything new in their environment. So accepting a new puppy is no exception. Let's face it, the cat really does think your home is all theirs. In this week's video, we're going to cover the best way to introduce your cat and new puppy so they get along, or at the very least, tolerate each other. Hey, maybe they will be snuggle buddies. You never know. For now, keep expectations low and go slow with the introduction and tips I'm about to share with you. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before I get this lesson started, be sure to hit that thumbs up <laughs> and let me know you're watching. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss when a new lesson gets released. All right, a couple very important things you should know about before we begin are, <laughs> first, learn all you can about canine communication and body signals. Definitely learn all the feline communication and body signals as well. Now, your animals speak volumes by acting and moving their body in certain ways. For example, your cat may pin their ears back and wag their tail quickly back and forth. These are signs of stress and your cat is feeling off and introductions should wait. Now, on the other paw, your dog may be staring, body posture may be rigid, and tail may be wagging fast and high. These are signals your dog is not ready to meet your cat. Now, other signals dogs give off to indicate they're stressed are panting when they aren't really hot or haven't really exerted much energy, excessively scratching and licking their lips. We call this a tongue flick. And repeated high-pitched whines over and over. Your dog may even cower, growl low and deep, and the hair on their neck and shoulders may stand up. We never correct a growl. This is your dog's way of telling you they're not comfortable with what's going on or being in that environment. Now, it's our job to learn these signals and help our dog not hurt them by pressing them to stay and force them to be part of something they aren't quite ready for. We want both animals to be calm and relaxed before there's any interactions. Keep in mind that dogs love to chase fast moving furry things like cats. This means that letting your dog off leash to chase the cat is a disaster waiting to happen. Not only is this very stressful for your cat, but can make your dog really excited every time they see a cat. That chase instinct will kick in every time and your dog will not learn to have better impulse control around your cat. Cats do take a lot longer when adjusting to change. Sometimes it takes weeks and maybe even months for cats to come around to the idea that there's a dog in the house, or any kind of change for that matter. Now, adding a dog to your home may set your cat off and stress them out. The best way to introduce the two is to start desensitizing both cat and dog at a distance first, maybe even behind closed doors. This means that we're going to actually gradually increase exposure while using positive association at a distance away from each other before we move closer. This also means that it's gonna take several of these training sessions to expose your pets to each other and create a positive association. Now, before we allow meet and greets, we can feed our pets uh, at the same time uh, by putting them in separate rooms near each other to start. Food usually makes new experiences like this positive for most pets. After a few rounds of mealtime exposure, you may be ready to move up to being in the same room exposure. <laughs> Here's how this is gonna work. First, make sure your pup is well exercised. A revved up pup will be way more reactive and ready to chase and jump at your cat. Be sure to take your pup outside before any meet and greets, whether it's with a cat or even another dog or human. Meeting new people and other animals is very exciting and can lead to excited pee. For more information to stop behaviors like this, check out this video here. Now, if you're struggling with potty training in general, be sure to grab the new puppy starter kit in the description below this video. There are tons of new puppy training tips and a potty training lesson and a bell training lesson too. All right, back to puppy and cat introductions. Both cat and dog get positive reinforcement in the presence of each other for a few seconds at a time. 10 to 30 seconds is ideal. Now you'll bring the cat into the scene at a distance 
and one person will feed the cat and the other person will feed the dog. It's important to note that the dog should be on a leash and back far enough away that he can see the cat but doesn't escalate to overexcitement, or what we like to call tipping over the threshold. Knowing your pup's threshold in this situation and tons of others is important. If a puppy tips over their threshold too soon, there won't be any learning going on, just reactivity. Your pup's threshold can change when other stimuli in the environment changes too. This means your pup may do well inside, but outside when other distractions are present, your pup may not be able to handle meet and greets at the same distance as they did in the house. Now, after a few moments of your pup and cat getting reinforcement in the presence of each other, the cat or dog is taken out of the scene and the food stops. The key is food is given in the presence of each other and stops when one or both are taken out of the room. We want to make positive associations with their presence. At this time, we are not giving any commands, not using any marker words. The only thing happening is the pets see each other, get tasty treats, and then the treats stop when one pet or both leave each other's presence. Now, another technique we use is to swap a couple of blankets from each other's space after a couple days of use. So if I let a dog lay on a blanket and then I also let the cat lay on a blanket, I'll move the cat's blanket to the dog's space and the dog's blanket to the cat's space. This allows each pet to smell the scent of the other. This can help your pets get used to each other as well. It is important that your cat always has a safe space to retreat back to. And I don't mean some cold, dark, scary place like the basement. Cats can get stressed if they are forced to stay in cold, uninviting, and secluded places. Now, be sure your cat still has access to you, their litter box, food and water without the pressure of your pup invading their space. Make sure you're using a puppy pen for playtime and a crate when you leave to keep your pup safe and out of trouble when you can't watch them. Now, you may have to move your litter box or switch to a box that is not easily accessible to your dog as well. I can promise you, <laughs> that your dog does not think there is anything wrong with grabbing a quick snack out of the litter box. <laughs> yes, that is absolutely the grossest thing ever, but to your dog, it's a delicacy. <laughs> you may need to put a puppy pen around the litter box if you have a very open floor plan and no place to move the litter box to. At some point, when both pets are calm, it's going to be time for a close-up introduction. It will be important to work on your pup's manners and obedience commands and impulse control ahead of time. This will help your pup remain calm and even in a down and stay position while the cat enters the room and checks out their new potential friend. In order to work on impulse control and manners, you should check out the online puppy training course we offer called 30 Days to Puppy Perfection. The course is filled with 50 plus training games and exercises that you should be working on with your dog to help them with their listening skills and their manners. The link to the course is below in the description. Think of it like the blueprint for puppy training. Okay, while I'm thinking of it and before I forget, you may want to get both your cat and your pup calming aids. So there are these plugins and sprays and collars and the one for dogs is Adapto. It's a dog appeasing pheromone that promotes calmness um, while comfort care is the equivalent for cats. Both are very similar to the pheromones given off uh, by the mother of a puppy and a kitten to help them calm when they're stressed. These products can help relax your pet and make the introduction a little less stressful. You're not gonna notice a huge change in behavior, but they often take the edge off for your pets. Now, before I share my last tip about introducing your puppy to a kitty, <laughs> if you found this video helpful and you don't wanna miss another video like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when new lessons go live. Okay, so you've been desensitizing your puppy to your cat and vice versa. And you've been keeping your pup on a leash so your pup doesn't chase the cat and scare the poop out of them. And you've been working on training your pup to have impulse control around the cat and decrease your dog's prey drive. And they've seen each other, they've been exposed to each other, and now it's time to let them interact. All right, so you are going to wanna to make sure that all interactions are supervised. Play should look like an even game of tag back and forth, or 
At the very least, it will be the cat and the dog look like they want to participate, not that they are fighting to protect their space or trying to protect themselves. Just a little note, <laughs> your dog is probably bigger than your cat and can easily pin your cat down, which will set back all the training that you've been working on. The let them work it out mentality is not the best, so don't let it escalate to barking and growling and hissing and scratching each other. Keep play sessions or interactions to a minimum. This means they should interact or play for about 10 minutes or less at a time to start. The more they get to know each other and the more they interact, the longer they can hang out together. Remember, your dog's natural prey drive will kick in if your cat has decided he or she has had enough and either walks or runs away. Be sure you manage your pup's behavior so they don't chase the cat. In the comments below, let me know, how are the introductions going? 